All right, welcome back to another video. This video will talk about um, how to draw drapery. So you can see here I'm set up with my paper on my drawing board with my reference photo just to the side. Now, of course, you could do this drawing from observation. Um, I chose to use a uh, photo reference, but I set up the drapery and the lighting myself. So this is my own photo that I'm working from. Uh, and I, I put a single light source on the subject so that I could get a wide range of value and this, the drapery will look really 3D in my drawing. And as you can see, I had given myself uh, two center lines, one vertical, one horizontal. And the way I am getting the shapes down on the page is I am just looking for any large general shapes and any landmark areas. For example, maybe one edge meets another edge somewhere or maybe a button, something unusual um, like the knot at the bottom or maybe the... Um, you know, any any point that looks like an edge or a point of interest could potentially be a landmark that you can use as a point of interest to look at and to try to match the position on your page. And I'm oftentimes using alignments. So I'll look at my reference and I'll use either a horizontal or vertical imaginary line just kind of using my pencil to see where things line up with each other so that I can see if that's happening in my drawing as well. So you can definitely use the sighting technique as well, but I'm especially using alignments here. So I look for an edge or a point of interest to, to check with an alignment to see, okay, so I'm looking at that. Where does that line up with the other elements of the drapery um, and see if you can get things lined up that way? I'm also just trying to simplify. So I'm really just trying to break everything down into more simple angular shapes. I'm not trying to get the curvature of the organic lines perfect yet because I want to kind of build the structure of a general accurate position of, of the different parts of the drapery first before I start getting really particular about the, um, the organic lines um, or the curves. So you could see when I was starting out, I was really kind of using more geometric simplified shapes. And I am using the side of my pencil lead, a really light touch with my pencil. I think um, for the line work here, I was just using a HB pencil. And I've got my kneaded eraser nearby in case I need to make any adjustments. So you'll kind of see sometimes my pencil will go over to the reference. So I'm basically using alignments. I'm checking with my pencil either vertically or horizontally to see where things line up to each other so I can check to see if that's happening in my drawing. So I'm just drawing really light just in case I need to make any adjustments that will be very easy to erase. And I'm just working with lines so far. I will eventually fill this in with value, but for now I'm just trying to get the shapes down. So you want to look at the composition, look at both the positive and negative space. How is the drapery sitting in the overall composition? How much space is it taking up? What is the overall shape of the entire drapery before you break it down into smaller parts? So again, just like everything else that I teach when I'm teaching drawing or painting, I always go through this step-by-step -step process of starting out with the largest shapes and then breaking it down into medium shapes and then small shapes and then detail and refinements are last. So if you see any teeny tiny little like details or particular shapes, you know, save them for last because that beginning stage of the drawing, you, you can expect to be doing a lot of editing, a lot of adjusting to try to get accuracy of the proportions and the position 
of these various parts of the drapery. Um, now it's up to you what type of folds you want to show in your drapery. Um, I would suggest using some cloth that does not have a pattern. So I just used a white blouse and I just kind of set it up on something where it can drape down and give me some interesting folds to work with. And then of course, once you light the subject, you're gonna get some interesting shadows and a wide range of value to work with. Um, as you can see, I'm, I'm still working mostly on the contour lines and just kind of doing adjustments now on some of these smaller parts. Obviously this is a time lapse, so it may appear that I'm working very quickly, but I assure you, I spent a lot of time on this drawing and I really took my time with the beginning stages of really being thoughtful about the shapes and the placement and the composition um, before I started getting particular about any smaller folds or smaller details or working on the value. Now, if you like, if you have really uh, strong, crisp shadows, like cast shadows, like I have in my uh, reference photo, you could outline those for sure. You know, the, the, those shadows take up space just like the positive space does. And that can kind of help you once you start filling in value to see where to fill in. And you'll see eventually I'll, I'll add the, the line work for the cast shadow in there. But um, you can see I'm, I'm just starting to lay down a little bit of value. And I'm following the usual rule that I always use when I draw is that I'm not smudging or blending. I'm actually just using the side of my pencil lead and getting my lines real close together so I can get an even application of graphite in those large areas. And uh, it will look light at first because I only have one layer of HB, but as I start layering, and moving up to my darker pencils as well with layering on top, um, I will start to be, you know, making choices about which shadows, which areas get darker. So I'm kind of like building up the shadows. So I'm working from light to dark because I'm starting out with a white paper and I'm slowly adding more and more graphite working towards those dark shadows. So remember, it can be very helpful to work this way in terms of getting a very even application of the graphite when you start with those lighter leads like a 2H or an HB and then layer on top with a softer darker leads you're going to be more likely to have an even application a, a good even look with the graphite when you layer the the leads in that way so um, I like starting the drawing out with an HB because it's kind of on the lighter, harder side of leads, but it's um, fairly close to the, the, mid, the middle point of the whole scale of all the different pencils. So I feel like it's a, a very easy pencil to work with. It's, it's you know, um, still going to give me an even application, but it's dark enough for me to easily see my lines. You know, the 2H is a very, very light pencil. A 2H will definitely give you the most even application. You'll notice that with the lighter leads. The lighter and harder the lead gets, once you get into that H range of pencils, the smoother the application is going to be. Once you move into the darker, softer leads, which is the B range, those are going to start looking a little bit more rough and grainy. Now, if you prefer more of a smooth look, after you lay down some of the darker leads, you can do a coat on top with a 2H again. And that, in a way, will kind of smooth out and blend out some of those darker leads a bit. And that is something that I did here as well that I felt like was helpful. But in general, you know, it's it's not a bad thing if something looks a little bit grainy, but if it's starting to look messy or sloppy, just take your time and slow down and make sure that you're getting your lines close together using the side of your pencil lead for the most even application of, of the graphite. But when in doubt, if you need a little extra help with smoothing it out, 
you can do your final layer on those areas with a 2H and that should help smooth it out just a bit. And once again, the reason why we're not using blending tools is because I really want to keep a strong structure to these shapes. And oftentimes, uh, when students are fairly new to drawing and they get into blending tools, they oftentimes overblend. And oftentimes they lose the structure because they blend so much that everything gets really soft and cloudy and flat. So unfortunately, over blending can actually flatten the form. So that's why I'm not using any blending tools. I'm literally just using the side of my pencil lead to fill in those values using a fairly light touch as I draw and just trying to get an even application so I can still have a, a nice organized realistic look to my drawing without uh, getting too soft and cloudy and flat because I I want this to look 3D because the more 3D it looks on my paper, the more realistic it's going to look. So as long as you are following those directions, no blending tools, trying to keep uh, a structured look, working from large to medium to small shapes in that order with detail last, and trying to get a range of value in your drawing according to your reference photo, then those are the main things to keep in mind. And you'll come out with a, a pretty good three-dimensional looking drawing. I do think it's also nice if there are cast shadows or shadows being cast on the wall behind the drapery that you add those in as well because it does give a sense of some environment and um, makes it look like the drapery is sitting or resting on something. It just further makes it look more 3D instead of just like this piece of drapery that's like floating with like no background. So um, that's my recommendation that you, uh, you know, don't overlook those cast shadows because those can make things look 3D and also be pretty interesting to look at. So here you can see, I believe I'm using the, the 4B pencil, which is the darkest pencil I used on this drawing. And it does look a bit more grainy than some of those lighter leads. But again, I can always go back with a lighter lead pencil and do another layer on top to try to even that out even more. All right, so here is a photo of the finished drawing. As you can see, I got a wide range of value. I've got fairly accurate proportions and placement for the various shapes. I've got a variety of different kind of folds in the drapery, so it's interesting to look at. And um, I did all of this without using any blending tools. So that's the basic guidelines for how to draw drapery. Um, I know that at first, it can seem very overwhelming when you're looking at all of these different shapes and different folds and it just seems like a lot of information to draw. Um, but that's why I break it down into steps and that's why it's so helpful to be able to simplify shapes for the start of your drawing and then kind of work up from there. So you've got a strong foundation to work on top of instead of trying to go straight in with detail that you might have to adjust later. You kind of get all of your adjusting done quickly early on with those more uh, more simplified large shapes. So I hope that this was helpful. I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.